picture yourself being young, full of dreams and hopes, and then being thrown into the trenches of World War I, unaware of what lies ahead. This sad reality captured Erich Maria Remarque in his novel All Quiet on the Western Front. How did Remarque manage to counteract the previously held belief that war was romantic? Can a book written nearly a century ago still raise relevant questions about war and humanity? What lessons can we learn from the fact that the horrors of World War I are still present and speak to us today? Let's take a closer look and find out. The First World War brought about unprecedented destruction and brutality. After the assassination of the Austro-Hungarian heir to the throne Franz Ferdinand on June 28, 1914 in Sarajevo, the German Empire officially declared war on Russia on August 1, 1914. A few days later, the German Empire declared war on both France and Belgium. In the following weeks and months, further declarations of war against Austria-Hungary as well as the German Empire followed. More and more countries joined the war in the following years like Italy in 1915 and the USA in 1917. I have linked an overview of all parties involved in the war in the description below. The First World War ended on November 11, 1918. About 17 million people lost their lives in this war, of which about 10 million were soldiers and about 7 million civilians. But outside of the loss of life, the war also scarred society through what is known as shell shock, which is now recognized as post-traumatic stress disorder. The generation that was scarred by it is now widely referred to as the lost generation and was discussed in Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises, among other works. The war was also covered by other authors, for example in Ernst Dünger's Storm of Steel, or by Erich Maria Remarque, whose work is the subject of this video. Erich Maria Remarque, whose real name was Erich Paul Remarque, was born in Osnabrück in 1898. His pen name originated in the early 1920s, with Maria being a reference to Rainer Maria Rilke, whom Remarque admired. Remarque was also a soldier in World War I, which ultimately led him to write All Quiet on the Western Front. Even before Hitler came to power, the Nazis began to defame Remarque as a Jew and to deny that he had taken part in the war at all. He first fled to Switzerland and lived there for several years until he fled to the USA in 1939, where he lived until the end of the Second World War. Only after the war, in 1948, did he return to Switzerland, where he lived until his death in 1970. His work, All Quiet on the Western Front, is considered one of the most important works of anti-war literature, which also led to the Nazis burning his works during major book burnings in May 1933. All Quiet on the Western Front was first published in 1928. The story is set during World War I and is told from the perspective of a German soldier named Paul Bäumer. The novel tells of Paul and his comrades who, as young men, eagerly go off to war only to quickly experience the brutal realities and cruelties of war. They are confronted with the horrors of trench warfare, constant death and the alienation of their homeland. The novel has been adapted to film several times, including Netflix's Oscar-winning 2022 adaptation of the same title. The central figures of the novel are Paul Bäumer and his comrades. Paul Bäumer is simultaneously the protagonist, first-person narrator and also the embodiment of Remarque himself. He is just 19 years old and a soldier in the German army. Over the course of the novel, Paul is increasingly broken by the horrors of war. He transforms from an ambitious young man to a man devoid of emotion, who is neither comfortable at home on leave from the front, nor truly able to mourn his fallen comrades. Still, there are moments when his old emotional self reappears, which serves as a contrast to his broken self. Kat is Paul's best friend in the army. He is 14 years old and also the unofficial leader of Paul's company. On the one hand, he acts as an anchor point for the other soldiers, as he manages to raise the morale of his comrades with his cunning manner. On the other hand, he is not an optimist. He feels strengthened by the belief that people basically have a sadistic instinct, which they are able to act out during the war. Albert Kropp is another good friend of Paul and a former classmate. He functions as the personification of the anti-war ideas that run through the novel. He repeatedly raises critical questions about war, its meaningfulness and nationalism, as in this example. We are here to protect our fatherland and the French are over there to protect their fatherland. 
Now, who's in the right? Like many soldiers, he's severely traumatized by the events of the war and undergoes a transformation into a shadow of his former self. There are many other comrades who appear in the course of the novel, some of whom are old classmates of Paul. Many of them lose their lives, are traumatized or seriously injured. They all serve to show the reader how pointless the fighting is. Two characters who do not have much impact on the actual plot, but are important nonetheless, are Kantorek and Himmelstoß. Kantorek is the former teacher of the young lads, and the one who convinces them to participate in the war effort and promised them heroism and glory, all reasoned from a deluded patriotic perspective. Himmelstoß, on the other hand, is the instructor and shows how war can bring out the worst in people. While he was just a mailman before the war, during the course of the war, he becomes a sadistic monster who takes pleasure in commanding dangerous orders simply because he wants to bully the young man. As you can probably guess, the central theme of the novel is war and its purpose. Virtually every scene reflects this theme. This theme is already clear in a sort of motto in the preface right before the beginning of the first chapter. This book is to be neither an accusation nor a confession, and least of all an adventure, for death is not an adventure to those who stand face to face with it. It will try simply to tell of a generation of men who, even though they may have escaped its shells, were destroyed by the war. Remarque makes it clear right away that this is not some heroic story, but a sober account of the horrors of war and the damage it has done. He also directly states outright that even the men who survived these horrors were destroyed and accordingly implicates himself in the process. Remarque repeatedly connects the brutality with the emotional coldness of the soldiers, which they apply for their own protection so as not to completely fall into madness. The youngster will hardly survive the carrying and at the most he will only last a few days. What he has gone through so far is nothing to what he's in for till he dies. Now he is numb and feels nothing. In an hour he will become one screaming bundle of intolerable pain. Every day that he can live will be a howling torture. And to whom does it matter whether he has them or not? I nod. Yes, Kat. We ought to put him out of his misery. And this is also made clear once again in the following quote. The terror of the front sinks deep down when we turn our backs upon it. We make grim, coarse jests about it. When a man dies, then we say he has nipped off his turret, and so we speak of everything. That keeps us from going mad. As long as we take it that way, we maintain our own resistance. In the shadow of this brutality, however, the comradeship and unity of the soldiers also emerges again and again. From Paul's point of view, and thus in line with remarks, the only good thing about the senseless slaughter is that friendships are formed that could not be stronger. This unity runs like a thread through the events and serves as a contrast to the brutality and the resulting trauma. Had we gone into the trenches without this period of training, most of us would certainly have gone mad. Only thus were we prepared for what awaited us. We did not break down but adapted ourselves. Our 20 years, which made many another thing so grievous, helped us in this. But by far the most important result was that it awakened in us a strong practical sense of esprit de corps, which in the field developed into the finest thing that arose out of the war, comradeship. It brought us on the absurd that the comrades then, despite the strong relationship with each other, show almost no emotion when one of the comrades finally falls in battle. It shows how intense the self-protection triggered by the trauma is, also above all to reduce the fear of one's own mortality. In addition to comradeship, nature also serves as a refuge for the soldiers. There are scenes in which they swim in rivers far from the front line or walk past a blossoming cherry tree and take a branch there to remind themselves of home. Paul also speaks openly about his connection to nature and what protection it offers him in the midst of battle. But the power to defend ourselves flows back into us out of the earth and out of the air. And most of all, it flows out of the earth. The earth is more important to the soldier than to anybody else. When he presses himself to the earth long and violently, when he urges himself deep into it with his face and with his limbs, under fire and with the fear of death upon him, then the earth is his only friend, his brother, his mother. He groans out his terror and screams into its silence and safety. The earth absorbs it all and gives him another 10 seconds of life. 10 seconds to run, 
then takes hold of him again, sometimes forever. On the one hand, this quote shows the struggle for survival that soldiers face on a daily basis, but on the other hand, it also shows how these elemental forces of earth and air provide protection and security for the soldier. Often this protection is only fleeting, but sometimes it is for eternity. This also shows at the same time that the idea of death is perceived more as redemption than as a terrifying event. All Quiet on the Western Front is a unique work. It shows with a precise and almost unemotional language how terrible the war really is in all its brutality. In doing so, Remarque makes no effort to mince words and does not digress into misplaced heroism, but instead depicts reality. The chosen first-person narrative perspective helps to immerse the reader in the events and to comprehend the experience from the eyes of a soldier. The novel is more relevant than ever because the senselessness and brutality of such a war has unfortunately not changed today as the current events in Ukraine or other conflicts on this planet show. This relevance will probably never disappear in the future. For this very reason, I would describe the novel not only as important, but as essential. Thanks for watching this video on this very important piece of literature. If you want to support me, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It really helps a lot. If you want to learn more about other works of fiction, feel free to check out one of my other videos on this channel. Until then, keep reading.